Hello again. Hey, we're back here um, checking the tram on this um, vertical head here. And I've got some interesting things to show you um, about this kind of uh, uh, head and uh, what I'm looking for right now because I'm on the discovery mode on this machine here and uh, let's, I'll get over here and uh, and show you some things okay now I ran the indicator across the top and got it within a couple of thousands and I want to show you something really interesting here let's get this right on the tip here I'll give it around there, right on zero. Now watch the run out. Let's see, let me get it so you can really see it. There we go. That run out is one thousandths. About four inches out on this precision ground shaft. And, and I'll tell you the source of this shaft in a minute. And you'll go, what? Well, maybe I won't tell you. You know, I could keep secrets. I can keep them. I don't tell you guys everything. You know, you can't make me. <laughs> okay. I'll put, I want to put that on there to... See what I can do here with this. Uh, oh, that dial's pretty stiff on this whole thing here. This gauge is uh, pretty much low. Oh, I got the pins in. It's causing problems. Here we go. Get those pins, set them up here. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's get it over here on zero and I'll try not to uh, disturb it too much. Let's see how much run out there is here. Uh, we'll try that. Now how could that be? We've got wow three thousandths run out right there and it only runs out one thousandths right there. Now, that's because I tweaked it in the call it. And that's an important tool if you want to run, you know, things to run straight. And then people wonder how you did it. It's because you watched DD. Dee Dee. <laughs> I've never seen anybody do some of this. First, uh, uh, on the YouTube or anything, uh, the first time I showed this was putting burrs uh, and Clico die grinders and getting them to run true. But it's the same kind of thing here. And what's going on here, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, we got some problem with the spindle nose here. You know, I get it to run true here, but it's running three thousandths out here. But at this point here, what are we going to do is I'm just going to, let me get those pins back down. And I'm going to uh, true it this way. Then I want to take another test cut on this block. Okay, and see what it looks like with it all tramped in as best as it can be tramped in. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find out why this collar chuck runs out here. So we're going to start working on this spindle nose and see if there's anything going on there and, uh, and correct it. Because uh, we want to be able to stick a bar in this ER40 uh, call it chuck and have it run a thousandths that far out. I, I would like that. I think it'll do it. Uh, the bearings are super precision in the head here. It's just got an interface problem between the spindle socket and uh, tool holders. So we're going to correct that and find out what's going on. So let's see how much time we got left here. Uh, you know, we're doing okay. We'll go ahead and get that uh, um, that trued up. And if I can reach all these uh, nuts here, I got I'm loosening nuts on that uh, on on this movement here. Hi, Chloe. Chloe's sneaking in here. Uh, you you chewed me out of bone. She did. Okay, let me get over here. I gotta get the muscle on this one. Oh, got it. 
Boy, that one was a tough guy put that on there. <laughs> that one too. Gotta get back and get some leverage here. I snug these down pretty tight, I guess. There we go. Got them loose. That's loose. Okay, I've got a stool I'm dancing with there. Ah. Then I get rid of that thing. I'm gonna put it over here. All right, so where were we? Oh yeah, here we go. <sighs> okay, we're a little high on the end there. You know, every adjustment on this is like adjusting the knuckle on a bridge port. You know how much fun that is? Because it's all offset, you know? It's never what it seems to be. Okay. See? See how? Uh, see, this gauge is a lot nicer than cranking your table back and forth, isn't it? Yeah. Um, on milling machines, the number two size is an awkward size. It just doesn't have enough uh, uh, room. And uh, I would really prefer a number three, but I'd be even in more trouble because a number three is a giant machine like that little radial drill. You know, number three is a big step up in weight, horsepower, but they're a lot more usable than number two all overall, I think, you know. And uh, my, my favorite um, milling machine that I've ever used was about a 1955 Cincinnati number no. three tool maker with a powered overarm. Also had the ho horizontal spindle. Now that was a machine. I mean, serious, serious machine. Not that this little thing's not serious, it's pretty serious. <laughs> but these uh, number twos are kind of petite. Even, even though this thing weighs uh, 5,000 pounds, um, it, uh, oh, we doing there? We're getting pretty close. You know, you see how that is when it's uh, kind of an offset joint? It's, it's just, it just takes a little while. You know, that's looking good enough. I'm going to snug it. Start snug snugging it. Give it a little check here and see if anything really bad happened. You know, thousands or so, that, that, that's pretty Jim dandy. I'm going to call that just good. Now, one of the things I'm going to do you know, figure, uh, okay, get everything running through. I'll do a test cut. I'll, I'll do a video of it, and we'll take some hunks off this thing. You know, let's take a hundred thousandth cut. It's good for the spindle uh, to uh, to do some stuff. I don't want to yank it out of the vise, but maybe we will. We'll see what happens. Um, this machine really does uh, work better under load. And, okay, let me see what we're doing here on on the time, I have to I have to run around and do everything. Oh, yeah, we're good. Okay, now, now I'm <laughs> uh, a friend of mine that passed away years ago said that only a darn fool would buy one of these. <laughs> I I did find this. This is a Fowler. Uh, I I don't know. It's a Fowler copy of of the Blake um, um, coax indicator, and I, it's been years since I used one of those, and it was a Blake, and I bought this cheap enough. If I don't like it, um, I can sell it on eBay. And, Probably just lose shipping. But anyway, what I'm going to try to do, I mean, this thing is, uh, you know, think of lining up a hole or, or something. I'm just wondering if this thing would be helpful uh, to do that. So uh, maybe it, I'll, I'll, I'll see how, how foolhardy that thing is. I think it works. 
uh, the idea of this is and see if I'm not a damn fool for uh, buying that. <laughs> okay, now that's that's real exciting. I, I, I watched a few people use these on YouTube and I, I go, well, you know, maybe this will work in this, uh, you know, this situation. I, I have a two axis DRO I could put on here. Honestly, I go, if I had a three axis one, I'd probably do it. But uh, I, you know, I would rather just kind of take my time and uh, be an old timer with a mill like this and not in too big of a hurry, but still be able to make things. So I'm going to try to make things the old time way on this machine without a digital readout. How about that? Okay, I'm going to load this video. You're watching one that I just loaded on this on tram and, and I think you got an idea of, of what that's about. Okay. Now this, this precision ground shaft here is made by a company called Jim's Manufacturing in, uh, in Camarillo, California. And it's a four speed transmission um, counter shaft for a Harley Davidson motorcycle. And I'm not kidding you, that company makes stuff as accurate as Taft Pierce. <laughs> and I think it's probably a hundred dollar item. That stuff's expensive from that. The, the guy that makes this stuff's name is Jim Thiessen. Really, uh, really an interesting person that uh, built a company. Okay, I'll load this video 